that is a very common Let's all open our Bibles. It's still the same topic we are going to do. So we're going to learn our memory verse again. Genesis 2.18. Does everybody remember now? Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help make for him. Praise the Lord. So we're all going to recite it together. Genesis 2.18. Everybody is talking. Again, it's Genesis 2.18. Thank you. You can recite it by heart now. It's not just from today that you learned it. You have known the scripture before. So you can recite it for us. Thank you, Ma. Hallelujah. Please let's give her a round of applause. Thank you so much, Ma. So we are going into the second and third outlines for today. Finishing the topic, we all need help. Last week, we did life areas needing help. So we talked about when we want to win souls, when we want to go for evangelism, when we need direction. We gave many examples of areas in which we are needing help. But today, we are going to treat those who qualify for help. Those who qualify for help. And we are all going to contribute, as usual, with Sunday school, right? So um, I'm going to share the scriptures, and then we're going to talk about it. So Sister Ino, Job 8.20. Job 8.20. Sister Uchama, Psalm 79, verse 9. Sister Victoria, Psalm 37, verse 40. Pastor, Psalm 40, 17. Mommy Ono, Malachi 3, 16 to 17. Daddy Ono, Psalm 46, verse 1 to 2. Sister Debbie, Isaiah 40, 31. Bro, Jose, Isaiah 49, 23. Sister Precious, Hebrews 9, 28. So we'll continue from Sister Ronke. <laughs> All right. So those who qualify for help, Sister Eno. From that scripture, ma. Help from God. Thank you, ma. That has said it all. If you're an evil doer, you should not expect help from God. It is those with integrity that God will help. So we have to search ourselves when we are asking God for help. Are we with integrity? For the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. I believe this is a prayer and uh, I would like to also call on Sister Nyabo to go ahead and pray for us. The Bible has told us that God's ear is not deaf or his arm short, not to deliver us, but it is what, what has separated us from him, iniquity. So it is when we have iniquity that that hinders us getting help from God. So the two um, scriptures that we just read now is encouraging us that we should always make sure that we're in right standing with God every day of our lives, even as we learned last week in church that 
every day you want to make sure that you're in right standing with God because we don't know when he may come. We don't know when he's returning. We don't know when we may be called home. Um, Psalm 37, 40, ma. Thank you so much, Ma. So we've seen two examples now. To, to be right standing with God, those that are upright, those that have integrity. And Sister Victoria just let us know, those who put their trust in God. The Bible has said, cost is any man who puts his trust in man. We should always have our trust in God. Psalm 40, 17. Psalm 40, verse 17. It says that, but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh of me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tiring, O my God. So from the Bible passage we read here, so we can see that the Lord himself is a helper and a deliverer of people that are poor and needy. You know, God actually has a soft spot, you know, for the poor. He is always willing to help the vulnerable in the society. Is always willing to help. Is always willing, you know, to send them help. And it's a lesson for us as believers as well. We should try and help the less privileged among us. Thank you, sir. I was going to add that point, and just as we have seen here, that those who qualify for the help of God are the poor and needy. We also, when we find ourselves in a situation that or in a privilege, in a privileged opportunity that we can help others, we should not withhold the help. I remember the question came last week that um, when you notice someone is needing help, should you just go ahead and help, or should you wait for the person to ask before you help? And um, we, we talked about it and we discussed that you don't need to wait for people to ask you for help before you help. Once you notice that this person they need this help. Just go ahead and do it. You know, just go ahead and do it. We don't need to ask. and Because most times when you ask people, they may tell you they're fine. They don't need anything. They're good and all that. But when you just do it, it will be very thoughtful of you. So when we are in that opportunity that God has revealed it to us, we have seen it. Let it not be that you just saw it for nothing. Go ahead and meet that need. Praise the Lord. Malachi three sixteen to seventeen. Malachi three sixteen to seventeen. Then the Lord, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of rem remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. Seventeen. On the on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them, just as a father has compassion and spares his own son who serves him. So this one is very direct. That um, those who fear the Lord are those who will be helped. Those who need to be helped, God helps them. You know, because they fear the Lord, and he will always remember them at all time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you so much, Ma. Daddy. Um, Psalm 46, 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will I not, therefore, we not we fear, do the earth be removed, and do the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when you make God your refuge, you have nothing to fear. Those who fear God will have no need to fear any man. And that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Isaiah 40:31.
But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on, e on wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and not and not be faint. Um, saying that people who qualifies for help are people who hope in the Lord. Uh, if we hope in the Lord, the Lord will be there to answer our prayers. Thank you. Forty nine twenty three. And the kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. My God. Yeah, so this is just letting us know that, you know, how much God we go to an extent for us, if we, uh, if we wait upon him, we will not be ashamed, even to the extent of causing the kings and queens of the earth to bow down and to bow, I mean, to meet us or bow down to us and meet us at, you know, at the point of our needs. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Hebrews 9.28. He appeared the second time without sin unto salvation. So here, I think those that need help are those that have waited upon the Lord. They have done the will of God. They've lived their life to please God. So, and at the end, God will answer. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. So yeah, we've given lots of examples. So we're going to ask now from Sister Rook. I think we gave one, two, three, four. Without looking at your manuals, at your um, outlines. So, from Sister Ronke, okay, I will not call Sister Moses, Sister Messi, because it came later. <laughs> I'll be happy, <laughs> but I will still come back. So, Sister Ronke, Brobiodun, Brotosi, Brochude, and then, Sister, please, what's your name? Behind Sister Precious, yes, ma'am. Okay, so Sister Kemi, you all give us one example each of those who qualify for help. So we're starting from Sister Aaron, okay? The upright. Thank you, ma. Bro, Biodun. Those who wait upon the Lord. Thank you, sir. Those who fear the Lord. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. No, she read. Oh, did you read? Ah, okay. <laughs> we'll come back. Okay, I, I was going to say those who have God as the only option. Um, there is no, there isn't another option. There is no plan B or plan C. When you are in a situation and you have God as the only option, you come to him. Thank you, sir. You have given us another one. <laughs> okay. And the, needy. the poor and the needy. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. So we are, we've all gone through that. The needy, the poor and the needy, those who are upright, those who fear the Lord, we have all analyzed it. So we're going to go into results of help. And one of the points that Brochu they said, like those who have God as their only option, really it should be our only option. What usually happens is that we try other things. Is when it fails us that we'll now be like, ah, I have God. We'll now go back and remember God. But really, it should be the one that we go to first. But most times, is when other things fail us that we then remember God. Let's make sure that we do it the other way around. So results of help. The following are results of help. So I'm going to start with Sister Musu now. You're going to read for us Psalm, 2 Samuel 22.30. 2 Samuel 22, 13. Sister Mercy, Psalm 46, verse 2. Psalm 46, verse 2. Um, Sister Hovai, Psalm 46, verse 5. Psalm 46, verse 5. Bro Lumi Day, 
Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26. And then Sister Esther. Um, Sister Esther um, Abimbola. Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. So we're going to start from 2 Samuel 22.30. And then you also just let us know what you feel from that scripture is the result of the help that we receive from God. Second Samuel twenty-two thirty. Twenty-two thirty. For by thee, I, by thee, I have run through a troop, and my God, have I leaped over a wall. So the question is. What, what is the result that you think from that scripture is that we get when we ask God for help? What's, what, is the, what is the result from that scripture? Um, the result is when you, when you run to God or when you call upon him, he's always there to answer. Yes, ma'am. That's the result. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, so the outline just expands that because, you know, really, can we run through a troop? By our own. Can we leap over a wall by our own? So things that you cannot do suddenly become doable. I have a friend when we were in med medical school, this scripture, she posted it everywhere by her bedside, by her mirror, in her kitchen. She has it everywhere. Anytime I see this scripture, I remember her. The reason is because anytime we have any medical exam, she'll say, God, I've come back to meet you. I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. Exam that before we go, our lecturers have already told us that only four people we pass out of 300. Ha! How are we going to do it? So she just knows that she has to go and call on God. This scripture is everywhere in her, in her place, in her house. And it was with God she was able to do this. So with God, we can run through a troop. With God, we can live through a wall. So impossibilities become possible when we go and meet God for help. Thank you, ma'am. Psalm 46, verse 2. Thank you. It says, Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. What this place is saying that um, even if the whole world is crashing today, as believers, our faith will still be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is going on around them, like the COVID-19. We, ha we, we have to remain in faith. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Ma. I like the last word you use, faith. We know the opposite of fear is faith. So when we ask God for help, we should stand firm in our faith. That is going to help us. We should not be fearful anymore. We should be rest assured in whom we have called on that he is faithful to answer. He cannot fail us. If, if, he has no, if he has not answered, it is not because he can't, but it is just that that is not the appropriate time or that is not the right thing. There are many things that we as children will be asking God for and he has not yet answered and we, we get discouraged. The Bible is telling us even from the initial scriptures that we read that we should wait upon him. If, like now, my nine-year-old son has asked me that he wants to drive, but I know that he can't drive at that age. I know if I should answer his request at that time, I will only be setting him up for destruction. But to him, he feels like he can do it, and I'm wasting his time. But we know better. So the same thing with God. There are some things that we will ask God, and we feel that we can do it. We need it now. We want it now. But God knows better. So he's, it is good for us to wait on him and just be, be faithful that he will answer us in due time. Psalm 46, verse 5. At break of day. So I think this means that if we have like confidence in God that he's going to do this thing, we'll be like, yeah, thank you so much, Ma. I, and as she was talking about the confidence and the calmness that comes from asking God, I don't know if you've ever heard that the Jew preach about it, that there was a day he was flying and there was turbulence in the plane and everyone was so fearful. And even the people that were around him, 
couldn't even eat their food and all that. And he asked the person beside us, if we cannot eat, how we eat? He collected that person's own, he ate. The person on the other side, he collected the eggs. When he finished, he started sleeping. They were like, ah, ah, what is making this man so confident? The pilot is like, we may crash, and he's sleeping. But it's because he was rest assured in the God that he serves that he was going to keep him safe. So when we have that assurance in our God, it's just like watching a film. I think we've said this before, watching a film a second time. And you've, when you watch the film the first time, you know, they will be doing the, doing, doing the film like as if the actor would die. You will see that, ah, would they kill him? Would they kill him? You'll be afraid, you'll be afraid, you'll be afraid. Later, you see that the guy didn't die. But when you are watching the film the second time, you won't, maybe your spouse has not watched it, and your spouse is asking you, did they kill you? Just be, you just be relaxed. You will not be moved because you already know. The same way we should have that confidence because we know who holds tomorrow. We know our God. We should be rest assured in him. Because he has told us that our tomorrow will be all right. All these promises he has given unto us, we just need to claim it and then be calm and be confident no matter what is going on around us now. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 26. It says that likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, but we know not how what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So this is referring to the Holy Spirit helping us in the place of prayer, and that if we find prayer you know, very hard, very difficult, why don't we engage the Holy Spirit and we can see that prayer becomes easy. Situations turns around. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, sir. I want to read somewhere that when you when you feel it is hardest to pray, that is even when you should pray. And if we feel like it's difficult, like Bro Lou said, we should ask the Holy Spirit for help. We should always ask for help, and it will help us pull through. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Jesus telling us that no matter what we are asking God for, if we put him first, he's going to supply our needs. Thank you. Very simple and short. Yeah. If we put him first, if we put him first, you know, there's that song that says, I'll put you in front, you know, that Jesus is all that matters. We sing the song, but are we really putting him first? If we want to try him and like, Call him, charge him to it that God, I'm putting you first. Let's see if we will not meet all our needs. It says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing, every other thing will be added unto us. Praise the Lord. We're going to be going into the conclusion now. But before I do that, I don't know if anybody has any question or any contributions, anything they want to add. I have some questions I want to ask myself. Okay, if there is um, nothing from the class. So my question is, so when you, we've been talking about, we talked about we all need help, right? The title is we all need help. So what happens, what do you do when you need help, you've asked for help from a friend or from a church member or something, and you get turned down? What do you do in that situation? You know, it took you a lot to eventually decide to ask for this help. And then you ask for it and you get turned down. What do you do? Nobody's going to talk. I will call you. Anybody wants to build the class out? Did you raise your hand, sir? <laughs> Sister Ronke? Okay. Expansion, ma. 
Well, it all depends. If I ask some help for a man, and the man said no, mm -hmm. right? And so it, and it also depends on what's my relationship with that person, right? Mm -hmm. How close are we? Mm -hmm. If I ask for help for my mom or my siblings, and they say no, I could be bold and, you know, and ask more and be more pushy or insist, right? So it all depends on who you're asking the help from. Okay. So, so this, in this situation, I was like, you ask from a friend or you ask from a church member or you ask from your pastor. Yeah, so again, it depends on the relationship, right? So if, if I know that they are capable of helping me and they say no, because, you know, I think because if you're in need, before you choose person, you must have had like a foreknowledge that maybe they're in a position to help. So if then they say no, of course, then you're shocked. So you might... You might want to ask them why are they saying no, right? You know, is it that they can't help you now or your thoughts were wrong? Maybe you thought they had money, but they don't. <laughs> you know, so I think it all depends, right? But if it's like somebody that you're not close to, then you might get out and that might discourage you from asking the next time. So I think it all depends on who are you asking for. Thank you so much, my sister um, Bukola. Thank you so much. Okay, mommy, oh no. After Sister Bukola, please. Um, I have like a practical example that I like to share. When I finished in the university, um, I, I was very sure I was going to get a job with Global Bank because the Akinbolas are my dad's cousins. So um, Alaba Akinbola was very close to my dad, so I was very sure I was getting a job with Global Bank. Lo and behold, I went to my uncle. It was like, come today, come tomorrow. I didn't get the job. I felt so bad, but at the end of the day, when I got married and I started having kids, the kind of job I was doing then, I had time for my children. I, even I, I went for like a five months um, maternity leave and I was very happy. I was telling my husband then that I thank God I was not working in a bank, that God must have seen all this and he has given me this kind of job. I could pick my children on time from school. There are times where we may be thinking, oh, this is the best for me at a particular time, and, but God, God, God knows the hand from the beginning. He knows everything. I was like, oh, if you are doing this kind of job, he was working in the bank and it's taking a lot of time. Even weekends is our work, but I was there and I had time for the children. And I was telling people, oh, I'm grateful I didn't get a bank job. Thank you, Ma. Mommy, Ma? Okay. After, after, okay. after Mommy, Ona. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I know it's, it's not easy to ask. But actually, when you ask, ask with an open mind. And be open to or no. I want you to know that if you get a no, just know that it's not yet time. That God, God will grant you whatever you ask according to his riches and glory and at his own time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is applicable to not just asking um, to, for material things from church members or friends. It's applicable to anything you may want to ask. And I want to give an example. Some time ago, I got a scholarship from Swiss government, and I used it. But before then, I had I got the scholarship to go and do master's in international health. But before then, I used to, you know, randomly apply for scholarship. And I got used to a no. Now, when I get those no's, it will pin me small. And I'll tell myself, okay, don't worry. Start looking for another one. And eventually, I got a big yes that I was even confused. I told my husband, this must be 419 people. How can they be talking about sending me tickets? And, you know, it was a full scholarship. So, when you ask and you get a no, brave it. Life is like that. Don't get used to having a yes all the time. Don't be a spoiled child that anything you ask, you get. That's life. Also remember that whoever you're asking from, you don't know the struggles of life. 
this person is also going through. There's uh, an adage in my place that says, I'm at you, a judge. Like, we all wear beautiful clothes to church, and you don't know what those beautiful clothes are covering. So believe that this person who said no actually couldn't. It's when you begin to think that because he bought a house. Hey, the house he bought. You don't know the loan that is hanging on his neck. You get what I mean? Because he bought a big car. Because, you know, don't. Let's face it with, you know, reality. I, I told somebody some time ago, he said, it was when you ask for a small loan, then you will know that nobody is able to help you. And I, I turned to say to the person, if I ask you now, as I mean I'm the one that asked you, would you have been able to give me? No. But you can justify that you're not able to give me because you know your situation. But others also have situation around them. So let's face it with you. Open mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my, my brother. In whatsoever happened, like, we just have to keep a leap of faith. Even the Bible said in the Matthew 6, that not everyone call, calling uh, Father, Father, we enter the, the kingdom of the Lord. Like, not everybody you ask for help, will receive it. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for all your contributions. It's been so wonderful. One point I want us to make sure we're taking home is the communication also that Sister Ronke talked about, that you can actually ask, right? But also in the, in the, from the person that said no, it's also good to communicate why you can't help at that particular point in time. So communication really helps and goes a long way. I will ask one more question and then we'll close. Now, what do you do? When every time you help this particular person, the person does, the person promises, let's say, let's say it's about money, the person promises to return the money and the person does not return the money. And the person keeps coming back, asking for help, and you are helping every time. And it's like your help is biting you in the foot. What do you do? Do you stop helping? Do you keep helping? How do you solve that? If you remember that one. I remember the maybe we can answer it another time. Okay, sir. But this one, I think I have to repeat myself. If you know it is one particular family situation, the guy has been borrowing money from the widow to his wife that is able to pay for his apartment. He never pays back and he borrows and I still give him and he never pays back. And for some and he still has I don't know how he gets the courage. The courage. <laughs> he still asks. And I still give him. So that's how it is. For me, you know, as long as what I can give is what I can afford to lose, I would always give. So, but if, if what I'm going to give him is going to make maybe me angry, angry with him or have something against him, that is counting against me with God. But as long as I can give him something that I can afford to lose, I will keep giving him again and again. So my, other, my question for... Um, that I had last week Sunday was, but I, I think we have run out of time. So how do we balance? Because the Bible, I was somewhere in Psalms, was telling us that um, we should not put our trust in man and um, woe unto someone that puts his trust in princes and horses. So how do we balance asking for help from our fellow men and only trusting in God? How do we have that balance? I don't know whether we have that time, but yeah, that's the question is ready. my mind. Yeah. Pastor, please. Oh. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. Um, so we will stop. We will stop at exactly one minute time. Okay. Um, our, our source of help is God, but God helps us through men. Somebody said, um, "The blessings of God comes from God through man to man." We cannot meet God, except there are a few instances God, even sometimes God might, like the case of Elijah, fed him through ravens, birds. Those are a few instances God will use animals to help us. But most 
times, it will still be true men. So that I'm ask, if one is asking a man, you must have prayed, you must have asked God for help, and then you won't just sit in your house and then that thing will just drop into your room. People will still have to, you know, extend a helping hand to you. So yes, we are trusting God, but again, we are open to help from man because God will still send people to you somehow. Then, daddy. So yeah, when, like mommy said, when you ask, when you ask and you get a no, sir, right? No, we can trust. Let me give you, let me give you an example. Because for my son, there was a day that I was talking to him that trust, that you should trust mommy, you should trust daddy. And he was like, no, I'm not supposed to trust you or daddy. The Bible says trust no man. I want you to trust God. You people will promise and fail. Ah, I did not know how to explain to him. I was like, well, you can trust mommy and daddy in some things. So there are some things you can, you can, you trust your spouse. That's why you got married to your spouse. So there are some, definitely some things you can trust some people for, right? But to put all your trust, the only person we can do that is in God. 100% is in God. So that's why I told my son that, well, you can trust me that I will always love you. You can trust me that when there is danger, I will always try my best to save you. Trust me that I will always put you first. But there are some things that you can't trust me in. So we cannot trust man 100%. But when we get that no, like mommy said, we go back to God. We should not get offended. We should not get angry. We go back to God. Daddy, do you want to quickly round up and then we call it a day? You're done. Okay, thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has come to us today. We thank you, God, as we have discussed that we all need help. Father, Lord, we ask for your help in each and every of our lives today. That where we need the most help in, the, in our lives, Baba, today, let it be a point of contact for you to meet us at the point of our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Each and every one of us, oh God, looking up to you for one thing or the other. Baba, let there be a turnaround today in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit the rest of the service into your hands. Take full control, take full preeminence in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's move forward. Let's fill the spaces in front of us. And let's just be on our feet as we worship today. Before we do that, let's just quickly thank God for the past week. Let's thank Him for the past months. Call Him special names. To us, He's the Alpha, He's the Omega, He's the beginning and the end. He's the mighty man in battle. He's been fighting our battles, both the ones we know and the ones we do not know. So just call him different names. Call him his special names to you. Who is he to you?
let's just get warm today. I know it's cold outside, but we'll get warm today inside. Amen. Amen.
this week the Lord is here this morning and I want you in the spirit of this last song we sang I want you to open your mouth and begin to confess the Lord confess that he is king of kings and the Lord of Lord he is the only true God I am that I am begin to confess the Lord this hour that he will manifest in your life open your mouth and begin to thank him thank him Tell the Lord, thank you for who he is. He's here already. And he's here for you and I. Psalm 103, Psalm 103 verse 2 and 4 is talking about us, telling us to bless the Lord. King David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives our sins, all our iniquities, who healeth our diseases. What has the Lord not been able to do for you? I want you to open your mouth in your own special way and begin to thank him. Thank the Lord for what he has been able to do for you. That you're breathing, that you're standing on your two feet, that you're alive today is simply because the Lord chose to keep you alive. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. He is a worthy God. Who can be compared with him? Abba Father, we honor you this morning. Thank you for sparing our life, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Earlier this morning, one of us has ministered to say, she mentioned something like unseen battles. I don't know if you know that there are battles that you don't see. I know. Praise the Lord. I will not forget at one point we were living in a compound in Lagos where our landlord was you know, very, he's into what we don't know, actually. And the people in the compound were telling us a lot of bad things. A lot of bad things also do happen. And then one day, he said to my husband, he usually will give us salad food and we won't eat. So he said to my husband, there's something about you people that every midnight I come to your door, I meet two giant dogs. We don't have dogs. That compound has big fence that we even know that no stray dog will come in. And he's the only one that locks and keeps the key. 
But he said to my husband, there's something about you people. Every midnight, I see two giant dogs by your door. Brethren, I know that it was God. The one who fights every unseen battle for you and I. I want you to open your mouth and begin to thank the Lord for every unseen battle. We pray each day and we say every arrow thrown at us by the devil. You don't see this arrow, do you? But these arrows are flying day and night beside you. Begin to open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you. The one who fights all my battle. The one who speaks for me when I'm not there. The one who answers them when they call my name in unholy places. Father, I thank you. The one who made it possible for me to be in the land of the living today. Lord, I give you praise. The one that has blessed me with children. The one that has given me husband or wife. The one that has given me admission. The one that saw me to Canada. It's not everyone who applied to Canadian Embassy that got approved. I want you to open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? and God is iniquity. I want you to go to God and say, is there any sin in my life? No, no, no. Lord, have mercy. Forgive me and wash me clean that I'm able to ascend the throne of grace today. Open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord for mercy. Show me mercy, Jehovah. Is there things I thought about that has defiled me? Or things I have said Oh, the look in my eyes, oh God. Jehovah, have mercy. Wash me clean and make me whole again, oh God. You are holy. A God is the only holy God. You are holy. King of kings. 
wash you clean. The Bible said that none of us is holy. Everyone born of a woman has sinned. Our mothers conceived us in sin, oh God. But you are the only one that has made us holy again. And we're asking you to have mercy today. Wash us clean, our Father. Wash us clean, oh God. mighty name we have prayed. I want you to pray. In this end time, there's a lot of confusion. If you've ever had reason to travel, that's when you will understand how confused the world is. If you had come into Canada some weeks ago, you will know that very soon things may be changing based on things that are happening. The same in Nigeria. Even to go home and come back. A lot of confusion. That now you have to read in between lines to understand or else you might go out and you can't come in. I want you to ask the Lord. The one who is able to keep us safe. The Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 1 he said it's, this is King David saying keep me safe Lord for I for in you, I take my refuge. I don't know where your refuge is, but I want you to know that the only right place to have a refuge right now is in Christ. Open your mouth and ask the Lord to keep you sane. Ask the Lord. I know what I'm saying. Growing up, I had a cousin of mine who suddenly went mad. We we'll call it madness in Nigeria. And we were all confused. When she recovered, she went through all manner of cares, including psychiatry. And then when she recovered, I was talking with her and she said, Sister, madness is in everyone. I cannot understand how I just lost it. Now, it is worse now because the world is confused. I want you to ask the Lord to keep your mind safe. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Keep my mind safe, O Lord. Cause my mind to stay in you and not lose focus. Keep me safe. Keep my mind safe, Jehovah. Do not let me lose it. Don't let me lose it, O oh Lord. Keep my mind safe, O oh God. Keep me safe. Keep me safe, O oh Lord. Lord. Keep me safe. Keep my mind to stay in you. In every confusion of the earth that I will be safe in you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want you to say after me. I receive the strength, O oh Lord. To be safe in you. I receive the strength, O oh Lord, to keep my mind focused in you, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray it as a prayer. I received strength. I received grace, Abba Father, to keep my mind stay in you, to keep my mind focused in you, that I will not lose concentration, O oh God. I receive the strength. I receive the grace, Abba Father. Father, help me. I cannot help myself, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
I want you to rebuke every devourer in our life. The devil is walking to and fro looking for who to devour. I want you to pray right now. Some of us earn reasonable sum, but ask us, where is your money? Many times we're lost trying to find where our money is. This is the devourer working against us. I want you to speak the word. I rebuke every devourer, every devourer in my life in the name of Jesus. In any way your feelings shall change by the devil. This is the time to speak the word. I rebuke you, you devourer, in every aspect of my life, in my finances, in my career growth, in my family, in every way that the enemy is working against me right now, I rebuke you, you devourer. I stand on the word of the Lord and I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Let loose, let loose, let loose in the mighty name of Jesus. Every devourer, every plan of the enemy against me and my household, against the church of God, every devourer, even in our nations of God. Lord, we stand on the authority of the Lord Jesus and we begin to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. In the life of our students here, every devourer, everyone that every enemy's plan that is making you not to move forward, not to progress in your academics, not to progress in your career, not to progress in every aspect of your life. We rebuke it now as a family. We stand as a team and we begin to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to pray after me. Every power of the enemy assigned to scatter me. I command you to dry up in the name of Jesus. Every power of the enemy assigned to scatter me in any way. I command you to dry up. Dry up in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This is the last Sunday in the month of October. What that means is that we have two months to the end of the year. I want you to ask, the, first of all, I want you to thank God again. With thanksgiving in your mouth, because it's not everyone that started the year that is here. With thanksgiving in your mouth, I want you to ask the Lord to see you to the end of the year, into the coming new year. Begin to pray. That this new, this remaining two months, you're going to excel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Begin to pray. This new month, this remaining part of the year, I will excel to the glory of the Lord. I will live and will not die. I will declare that the Lord has been with us in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise and adoration. Thank you for answer to our prayers. Thank you for strength renewed. Thank you for grace. Thank you for enablement. Thank you for every good thing you're doing in our life. We know that you will continue to do that for which only you is our God. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. We cover our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Our testimony will not be for nothing. It will be forever. In Jesus' name, blessed be your holy name, Abba Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we just greet someone by our side and say welcome to church today? Welcome to today's service. Amen. You are welcome to RCCG Bethel Chapel, Kamloops. Pray as you partake in today's service, the Lord shall meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It is time for tithe and offerings. Can we bring out our substances even as we pray. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can interact. The email is displayed on the screen. RCCG Bethel. Camloops at gmail.com. 
rccgbetter.camloops at gmail.com. You can also use the POS at the back. If you have a credit card or a debit card, you can use that as well. Praise the Lord. Can we bow our heads even as we, as we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for another opportunity you have given us again to bring to your house. And we bless you, Father, because you have provided all this for us. Blessed be your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, as we give of our substances, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you will bless us abundantly in the name of Jesus. Pray, oh God, that you will enrich us on every side, on every side, in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we pray that for us, for they, that for those that do not have to give, we pray, oh God, that you would enrich their pockets in Jesus' name. You will not just enrich them financially, but you enrich them spiritually. You enrich them physically. You enrich them in their health in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have um, anyone worshiping with us for the first time? If you know that this is going to be your first Sunday, you know, worshiping with RCCG Bethel Chapel, can you signify by just raising up your hands? Hallelujah. We have one brethren in our midst. Can you just rise up and let us welcome you? Choir. As you worship with us today, may your bands be filled. As you feast with us before his presence, may your cup overflow. You are well. You can have your seat. Amen. You are welcome to RCCG Bethel Chapel Kamloops. Uh, I pray that even as you partake with this assembly, the Lord will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. You are welcome, my brother. Um, the ushers will give you a first time card. Please just in, um, indicate the name by which you want to be called by. And um, if you have any prayer point, you can put it there as well. If there is any department you want to join, just put it there as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church schedule still remains the same. We meet here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, workers meeting start at um, 9.40. On Thursdays, we have um, our Digging Deep and our Faith Clinic on Thursdays, 6.30 p.m. So we alternate the Digging Deep with the Faith Clinic. Hallelujah. On every first Thursday of the month, we always um, meet to fast. We fast and we, then we meet to pray later in the evening. Every first Thursday of the month. So it means that um, the next Thursday we'll be praying, we'll be meeting to pray, and then we'll be fasting alongside. Um, that will be the 4th of November, and they will be meeting in the church. So let's please put that in our calendar. And also the church is wanting to emphasize that um, we should endeavor to make it a date every Thursday, you know. We don't have too much time to explore the Word of God on a, on a regular Sunday, but usually Thursdays give us that privilege, that platform to be able to explore God's Word in digging, in digging deep, you know, explore God's Word line upon line, precept upon precept. Also, if it's the faith clinic as well, it gives you the opportunity to be able to pray. You know, we are living in a system, in a world where, you know, everything can, everything attempts to entrench us. So if we take out some time to pray on Thursday, that would be very, that would be very good. So let's make it a date every Thursday. Hallelujah. A couple of announcements here before I go. Um, the church anniversary will be coming up very soon, we all know. And the theme will be greater glory. 
with him will be called Greater Glory. So it's going to, the church anniversary is happening between November 9th to November 14th. November 9th to November 14th. It's going to be for one week. So let's have that in our calendar as well. Hallelujah. Um, workers and ministers meeting would also hold on Saturday, November 13th by 3 p.m. Saturday, November 13th by 3 p.m. We'll be having um, the workers and ministers meeting. Also, the University Campus Fellowship. The University Campus Fellowship, uh, we're all aware of the fact that um, the University Campus Fellowship will be inaugurated on the 12th of November. We'll be having um, the, university, the Campus Fellowship at the University, at TRU. And um, we are enjoining everyone to be a partaker of this. So the inaugural service will be held on November the 12th. Uh, we can, I think there is a flyer just right at the door there. You can also check the details you know, of that inaugural service. Pastor PK will be flying in from the U.S. to minister on that day. And it's going to be holding at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Um... If you require, for anyone requiring transportation, please, um, we want you to indicate um, by um, sending an email to the church, the, 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 you're sending an email to the church at rccgbetelcamloops at gmail.com or you can call or text 250-299-9668. So if you need transportation to the church in any way, maybe on Thursday or on, on Sunday or any church program we might be having, so you can um, text this number or call 250-299-9668. And you can be rest assured that, you know, a, tra um, a system of conveying you to this place will be organized. Praise the Lord. Mask mandate in B.C., According to the most recent BC CDC guideline, mask is now mandatory in all indoor settings. However, worship centers such as churches are exempted from this mask mandate. So in Bethel Chapel, mask is encouraged but not compulsory. So we encourage the use of mask, but at the same time it's not compulsory. Praise the Lord. All TRU students lecturers, if you know you have anything to do with um, TRU, kindly wait behind after the service to see the pastor. All TRU students, lecturers, or anything, or any association you might have with TRU, please wait behind after the service to see the pastor. And finally, all HODs and assistants should wait behind as well to see the pastor. All HODs and assistants should wait behind after service to see the pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we partake in the service of today, I pray that the Lord will meet every one of us at the point of our need in Jesus' name. I pray that we will not return back the same way we came in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time for our hymn. I would um, and join us to please rise on our feet as we sing unto the God unto God. Stop. 
Jesus today. Oh, may this bound just arms through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and guide us through all ills in this world and the next Have our seats as we continue service. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you. Thank you, ancient of days, for thus far you have led us. Thank you for bringing us, O oh Lord, even unto the last day of this month of October. Thank you for your great hand upon our lives. Father, we ask, O oh God, that in your mercy, you will, O oh God, Jehovah, speak to us today. Let it come to pass, O oh God, that your word will come unto us as spirit and as life, O oh God. Let it come to meet us at the points of our needs, O oh God, that at the end of the day, your name will be glorified. Thank you for answer to our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's great to be in church. Our topic today says, Who is your king? Who is your king? Praise the Lord. And our text will be taken from the book of Second Kings chapter 11. 2 Kings 11, verses 13 to 21. 2 Kings 11, 13 to 21. And when Atala heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of the Lord. 14. Technical, are you there with us? And when she looked, behold, the king stood by the pillar, and as the manner was, and the prince and the trumpeters by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets, and Atala rent her clothes and cried. Treason, treason, 15. But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds and of the 
and the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have half fought without the ranges, and him that followeth her kill with the sword. For the priest has said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. 16. And they laid hands on her, and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house, and there she was slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, between the king also and the people. And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly and slew Matt and the priest of Baal before the altars. And the priest appointed officer over the house of the Lord. And he took the rulers over, the rulers over hundreds and the captains and the guards and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gates of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings. And all the people of the land rejoiced. And the city was in quiet. And they slew Atala with the sword beside the king's house. 21. Seven years old was Jehoash when he began to reign. Praise the Lord. You know, there is a saying that it is important a land does not have a king, assuming that land will have a bad king. It is better not to have a ruler than to have a bad one. Praise the Lord. You may ask, why is that? Rulers are supposed to be symbols of righteousness, symbols of, you know, guidance and what to look up to as what is right. So you look into the societies where you have tyrants as rulers and you see that the people are not just, you know, um, always sorrowful. They are always poor because you can't fully express yourself. Your talents and everything that the Lord has deposited in you, you are careful how to use it in order not to displease the king. Atala, I hope we know who she is. She was the daughter of Jezebel. So, Jezebel was her mentor and for, I, I'm sure, every one of us should know the kind of person Jezebel was and what to expect from who Jezebel mentored. Praise the Lord. But you see, our concern today is not about political leaders, not even about church leaders, but about our self-leadership and who we submit ourselves to, to be our king and our mentor. Praise the Lord. And now, I have to clarify, when we talk about leaders, every one of us seated here is a leader. Irrespective of how old you think you are. I remember in my family once we were discussing and one of my sons said, ah, I'm just a teenager. And then my wife pointed him to 
this king, he was only seven when he became king of Israel. And it was written that he turned the heart of the people to God. So at whatever level you find yourself, you are not just leading the people below you. You have opportunity to lead even those above you. Praise the Lord. I remember I was in secondary school several years ago when our parents called us into a meeting. It happened that my two elder brothers were already married and the help they used to give to the family were no longer forthcoming. And it was a matter of concern. My immediate elder brother was already a reverend gentleman with the Methodist Church. And, you know, and their wives were carrying all the blame. That it was since they got married, these women are bad. Yes. And when it was my turn to speak, I said to them, all of us know ourselves. Some of us will just take opportunity that you're now married and shift the blame to your wife. Who will not have opportunity to come and tell the world how she used to beg you in the night to help your people? And I said to them, let's not blame these women, including the one I will marry in future. If I refuse to do for any of you, what I have the resources to do, just know I didn't want to do it. Don't blame anybody. My mother still refers to that till date. I was in secondary school. These guys are the people I look up to to collect money, you know, to go back to school and all that. But I was able to provide that le level of leadership. At the Sunday school this morning, we were discussing, you know, when somebody comes to borrow money and all that and all that. It is an opportunity for you to provide leadership. Praise the Lord. If you come to borrow today and you have not paid, when you come back tomorrow, I'll sit you down to have a discussion. I'm not saying I will not give you. But we will sit down and have quality discussion. Because I'll probably be able to give you again because you're my brother. But if you go out to do the same, it will be very irresponsible. And you will lose opportunities that would have come your way but because somebody failed to provide you leadership when the opportunity called for it, you will lose out in life. Praise the Lord. It is important in church, we know that we have been called onto a very great calling. It's not just the pastor. You know, when... When um, the Lord said, go ye forth into the whole world and preach, was he talking to the pastors? No. He was talking to believers. Every single one of us, you have been called to become a leader. I remember the first parish of Redeemed Christian Church of God that I joined way back. Very young parish. Wear it. And then we had this brother who is going from one person to the other and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. The 
pastor is try to speak to him in, you know, quietly about it, try to cancel him. But at a point, he was called to the front of the church to say, brethren, this is our wonderful brother. Hmm? He's very spiritual, but in money matters. Please, he is not matured. Don't deal with him. Don't lend him one naira. Amen. It will look as if the pastor is wicked, but that is leadership. If you don't do it for him, then he will never grow. Amen. In the book of 1 Kings 1 to 3, you will see the story of Eli and his family. Eli was reputed to be a very good man. But what was the undoing of his family? Poor leadership. Weak when it comes to leading his family. Oh, don't do that. It's not good. You know, this is not the way you should. What did the Bible say? When you spare the rod, amen, you spoil your child. It is important we know when not to rub oil on our children, whether spiritual or biological. It is important we know when to stand up and say, enough is enough. Praise the Lord. Who is your leader? Who is your king? You, you know, we discussed thoroughly this morning who the Lord will help, um, what are the conditions and all that. If you have not met the condition, forget it. <laughs> the Lord will always want you to go back and repeat the class. He is not wicked. It is leadership. He wants you to grow. He doesn't want to give you things that will destroy you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he will go, so that when he grows up, he will not depart from it. You know, in my family, I used to wonder if my children would think I'm wicked. Amen. Sometimes they refer to me as a soldier. But I know it is in their best interest. And recently, I got very happy because one of them, we got talking about marriage, and we said to him, if you're ready to marry now, why not? Go ahead. Um, my wife said to him, even if you marry now, you have to bring the child to me. I will be training the child while you go to school. <laughs> he laughed. Say, mommy, uh, you are becoming soft now. I will not bring my children to you now. I will take them to Auntie Janet. Auntie Janet happened to be my younger sister who was mentored and tutored by my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when, when she came to our house, she cringes any time that we are disciplining the children. And my wife is there as my cheerleader to say, flog him very well. Praise the Lord. Now, he has come to appreciate. In fact, one of the days he called to say, if not for the training you people gave me, 
maybe I would have been dead in Anambra State today. He has come to appreciate it now, just like some of us when issues of life come and we overcome. We say, oh God, thank you. I didn't know this was why this thing didn't come true before now. Amen. It is important we realize that at every point in time of our life, who we look up to is important. It is also important to be careful knowing that there are people that are looking up to us. Whatever age you think you are, whatever situation in life you think you are, there are always people that benefit from whatsoever you are doing. There are also people that may be led to hell because of your action or inaction. Praise the Lord. You know, if somebody will say, if this is how a Christian behaves, I better stay in my house. You have won a soul for the devil. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Let nobody go to hell because of you. Amen. So, like I said, our emphasis today is on how we lead ourselves, which will trans transcend to how we lead people that the Lord have placed in our care. And when I say that, it is not just the people living in your house, the people you walk with every day, the people you encounter as you go shopping, the people that you don't even know, but that they are watching you. How do you lead them? Who you look up to as your mentor or who you look up to to copy and emulate will determine who you become eventually in life. When you are able to develop self-leadership, you will be able to know traits of failed leaders that you have to avoid. Assuming Atala recognized the fact that her mother was a failed leader and mended her ways, she wouldn't have ended the way she ended. For some of us, we came from very abusive families, like my own. If I had looked up to my father, if I had looked up to my uncles, probably <laughs> none of you will be able to recognize her today. Because I came from a place where it looked fashionable to beat up your wife. Praise the Lord. That didn't define me. Rather, I made up my mind to... When I started, I didn't quite have, you know, a figure I had to look up to. I read books. And I decided that this is the way to go until eventually I met with Christ and was taught in church. If I tell you that who I, be, who I have become today is from, you know, what my father taught me, I'll be telling you a lie. He taught me differently. It's up to you to teach yourself if you have not been taught well. And self-leadership is not just about, um, you know, not getting into a fight and all that. What do you think about when you are alone? 
What do you listen to? What do you watch? Praise the Lord. Any man or woman who have been able to lead himself well in privacy is a man that is destined to win always. Because it's in your private time that the devil have the best opportunity to deal with you. You may not be committing, committing any sin, but what exactly are you feeding your mind? Those are the things that will eventually mold who you become. Praise the Lord. Like somewhere, um, you won't say um, that it was his parents that trained him. No. Samuel grew under the same ally that didn't train his children well. So, what does that tell us? Definitely there must have been a very conscious effort for Samuel to stay within the will of God for him. It, is not, it doesn't come by magic. There is something you have to do. There are things you have to forego for you to make progress. Praise the Lord. Parents, I beg you in the name of God, if you fail in any other thing, don't fail in providing quality leadership for your children. For their sake and for the sake of the children they will have, stand up to it. Stand up to it. It's not tea party. It's a hell lot of work. But if you finish doing it, God will bless you for it. Amen. And for yourself, it is important you know that even though the whole world may be doing it, that does not make it right for you. That every other person is going this way does not make it right. And you have one good example that you can always look up to. A leader that has never failed. Like I said, sometimes you wonder, is God there for me? Does he really care? But we know he's the only one who knows the end from the beginning. He's the one who will determine when you have passed a class and it is ready for you to move on. As long as you hold on to him, you will never fail. As long as you look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, I can assure you, you will never fail. Praise the Lord. To that effect, I'll ask us this morning, Because in the area of self-leadership, you, you have just two ways to go. It's either you go with yourself. Let me not say with the world. It's either you go with yourself. And the Bible says that <laughs> the fools, it is the fool who is right in his own understanding. You either go with your own understanding or 
you submit to that authority that you know is able to take you to your ultimate destination. If you ask my advice, I'll tell you to submit unto the Lord today. If you do, you will have life and you will have it more abundantly. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word unto us this morning, O oh God. Thank you because you are the one who knows the end even from the beginning. Thank you, ancient of this, because you will cause your word even to bear fruit in our lives, O oh God. Let it come to pass that in every way, O oh God, Jehovah, we have been following our own selfish desires, O oh God. In every way, we have stepped out of that way that you have marked for us. Father, the blood of Jesus will speak for us today. You will bring us back unto yourself, O oh God. And you will never let us to go astray again. Father, let it come to pass, O God, Jehovah, that everyone that look unto us, O God, will never miss the way in Jesus' name. Thank you for answer to our prayers. Let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we just quickly pray for our daddy? Can we just stretch up our hands and pray for him? That he has blessed us, God himself will bless him. The word that has gone out today will not stand against him on the very last day. Shall we just pray that he himself, God will make him to be a leader. So young people looking up unto him in the mighty name of Jesus. He will be a leader that will stand out in this generation. The plan and the purpose of God for his life will fulfill. In the mighty name of Jesus, on the very last day, welcome home, dear son. We be the voice that we speak unto him. Let's remember mommy and the family. Let's commit the family into the hand of God. That the hand of God will be upon the family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty Father. Glory be unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we close... You know, I'm sure you know that not all month ends like the month of October. The month of October ends in a grand style. It ends the last day is on a Sunday. Are you not grateful to say the last day of the month? Hallelujah. You're not looking as if you are grateful. Amen. You're looking as if you just want to go home. Hallelujah. Amen. For another two, three minutes, shall we just thank God for the month of October? And say, Father, thank you. For the 31 days in this month, I am grateful. I have worked and the valley of the shadow of death. But you preserved me. I traveled. You watched over me. I went out. I returned. Thank you for watching over my family. Wherever they might be all over the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. But then don't take it for granted. The Bible says, let the people praise you, God. Let the people praise you. And the heart will yield is increase. The increase left in the year is depending on your thanksgiving. Just appreciate him this morning. Say, Father, we thank you just for the month of October. Thank you, Father. From the beginning to the end, I am grateful. I slept and I woke up. Thank God the things you are grateful for. Thank him. And tell him the things you are grateful for. Don't, I don't need to remind you. Some people slept like you sleep and they never woke up. Some people died in their sleep. But you slept and you woke up in the morning. It is not your alarm clock that woke you up. It is not because you are smart. It is because, not because you know how to read the Bible. Thank the God, thank your maker, the one that has been watching over you, the one that has been preserving you, the one that has made sure that timely they did not come near you, the one that made sure that the pandemic did not claim the life of your children. Bless his holy name this morning. Exalt his name. Worship him. Give him thanks. Give him praises. 
give him adoration. The Father, we thank you. You are a good God. You've been too good. You have been too kind. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. taught us about leadership. You know, I know you all agree with me. One of the greatest leaders that ever walked in the face of the earth was Jesus Christ himself. But you know, Jesus Christ um, picked 12 disciples. He picked them. They were not recommended. He picked them by himself. But you know, out of 12, there was a Judas. I want to believe that the intention of Judas was not initially to betray Jesus. But something happened along the line. He missed it. And look at how he ended. That was somebody that was following God in the form of man. That was somebody that wasn't even following a pastor. He wasn't following a general overseer. He was following Jesus himself. I mean, it is possible for you to miss it. You know, I remember that story in the book of Luke chapter 9. The Bible says somebody came to be Jesus. He said, Jesus, I just want to follow you. And Jesus was trying to discourage him. He said, son of man, even birds, they have way. Even oxes, they have oil. He said, but son of man has no way. And the next verse, you know what happened? Jesus Christ now meant another person. He said, you, follow me. Jesus Christ picked him. But you know what he said? He said, ah, let me go and bury my father. Let me go. And, I just want us to crown to God and say, Father, for the rest of the year, or for the rest of my life, I just want to follow you. It doesn't matter what might come my way. I just want to follow you. The circumstances might present alternative facts, but I just want to follow you. My colleagues at work, they might frustrate me. I just want to follow you. The church policy might frustrate me. I may want to give up, but I just want to follow you. I don't want to be enticed by anything. I don't want to be distracted. I might be working, the pastor might not appreciate it, but I just want to follow you. I just want to serve you. I just want to follow you. Oh, the grace to the very end. Father, just as you helped Peter, you helped Simon. Father, please help me. Help me follow you. To the very end, O oh Lord. Father, please, I just want to follow you. I just want to follow you. To the very end. Make it impossible for me not to follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to follow you. I just want to follow you. Anywhere I go, let your presence be with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be unto your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
And for 30 seconds, why don't you just commit your week to the hand of God? Remember that this week not only ends, did not only bring us to the end of this month, but also bring us to the, the new month. Commit this week. Tell God what you want to see this week. You want to see favor. You want to experience the grace of God upon your life. You want to experience the manifestation of the power of God in your life. Why don't you talk to God this morning and say, Father, I commit this week into your hand. As the month of October will end this week, my life will not come to an end this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything in your life that is not perfect, let it say perfection this week. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week as you go, the presence of God will go with you. Moses said, we don't want to leave this place except you go with us. God himself will go with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we just commit the week and the new month into the hand of God. That Father, this month of November will be my best month so far in the land of the living. Oh, this month I shall see no evil. The month of November I will hear no evil. In the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how many lives the pandemic will claim in this land. I will not be one of them. My children will not be one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be unto your holy name. Be exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we rise up even as we say the grace together? The Almighty God, He will go with you. God Himself will keep you. God is the maker of man. He said, Follow me and I will make you. This week, God will make you. What you can ever make yourself, He will make you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything you have been chasing after, from this week, that thing begins to chase after you. Anything you want, we want you. Anywhere you show up this week, the favor of God will show up for you. Anywhere they discuss your matter, the grace of God will answer for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week will be the best week of your life so far. This week, your life will not be cut short. This week, you will go and you will return. Anything that has been killing others will not kill you. Anything that has been terminating others will not terminate your life. In the hand of God, you will see the hand of God like never before in your life this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, the hand of God will be upon you this week. The Bible says the hand of God came upon Elijah and the outrunned chariot of horses. This week the Lord will grant you speed. What is taking your mates hundreds of years to accomplish, you will accomplish much more in a few weeks. In the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God will locate you this week. What is making your marriage to struggle, you will achieve much more with ease this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will die in your hand this week. Everything the Lord has given unto you, both living things and non living things, car, houses, this week you will not lose anyone. In the mighty name of Jesus, no one will pay you a condolence visit this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, untimely death will not come near you. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, there shall be no more sorrow. The last time you sorrow will be the last time you ever sorrow in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, there shall be no more weeping. Any tears you shed will be tears of joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every promises of God that has been hanging on your head, this week you find fulfillment. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help you. The Lord will make you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. The Lord will be gracious unto you. He will grant you peace. He will grant you rest on every side. You shall go and you shall return. And you shall return with your testimony. And we shall together rejoice with you and give God praise for heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah.
their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and beside you and behind you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you I TRU students should wait behind and all HODs and assistant HODs should wait behind. Thank you. 